leg. Not a good sign. And a lot of pain. And when you see players hitting the floor like that. It's your boy Legendary E and we are back here for another episode of the New York Knicks My GM. Like always, if you guys have missed the last episode, there will be a link to it in the description below. But as you guys can see from the title and from the front, he's hurt. Christos Porzingis is out for the rest of the season with a lower left leg stress fracture. And it sucks. This definitely sucks. We are actually in contract negotiations and my man went down he went down but as i was saying before you guys make sure you go ahead and like this video hit the subscribe button and, and actually subscribe to my second channel i do want to start making that into my my gm channel for a different one go ahead and check that out but kp has been averaging 26 points a game and something that we got to discuss is last season he was injured only playing 48 games this season he made it to 50 with 21 double doubles but we do got to talk about how this man is extremely injury prone now, obviously, he is a young player. I'm not thinking about trading him anytime soon, but if this continues for the next, like, few seasons, we might have to consider ma making that move because this is meant to be realistic. And if and if he keeps on getting hurt every single season, that's going to be a major problem. Now, in the end, we do consider uh, with his negotiations, but we also... Got to trade Emane and Moutier, and that has to happen this episode. We're actually at the trade deadline. Moutier is seeking around 13 to 14 mil million dollars this season. And I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to be the one to actually be paying him that money. I'm just not with it. I'm just not with it. Now, we are looking at some of these trades. The first trade that I was actually really, really intrigued in, it wasn't this one with the Hornets. Not that one. But it was actually one with the Indiana Pacers. This, this one actually... It was it was interesting because obviously they have Darren Collison. He made a movie is younger. That would be somebody that they're that they're looking to like get, especially a position that they're willing to actually upgrade at. So we were looking at this trade. In the end, I wasn't able to actually make it come come, uh, come through, but this was definitely a trade that we were originally looking at. And taking a side note, this is gonna be my last my GM uh, where I am doing post commentaries. Uh, the next one, I do plan on doing it live, so stay tuned for that. I know that a lot of people have been asking me why. My bad on that. The next ones will, will be live, but after the Pacers trade fell through, we actually looked at the Raptors trading for the trading for De Delon, right? And after a few seconds, I was like, eh, this ain't that realistic because Delon, right, is around the same age, and they still have Kyle Lowry, even though if it's not long term. But in the end, I did look at this trade, and it made the most sense. The Golden State Warriors. Obviously, they have J.J. Barea. I am looking for a first-round pick. And Sean Livingston is making around $16 million on on his last deal. The Warriors could use somebody like Emmanuel Moutier. J.J.'s not been playing for him, but Emmanuel Moutier could push them over the top two in a championship. So them, give, so them giving up a first-round pick and J.J. Barea is pretty much nothing. We are pretty much giving away Emmanuel Moutier, but at least we are getting a first-round pick. Unfortunately, it's not going to be in this year's draft. It is going to be in 2021, which sucks. But that's the best, most realistic deal that we actually could get for him. So let me know how you guys grade that trade. But while we are also here, I am going to be re releasing JJ Barea because obviously this is the, the trade deadline. And during this time, teams do make trades and they do start to release players, especially once with Kristaps getting hurt. I'm tanking, so we also decide to, yo, it's the best thing, we got to release Wes Matthews, he is on the final year of his contract, first of all, I do believe that he could be useful on a contending team, and I don't want, I don't want him helping us win games, that's probably the biggest thing, I don't want him to help us win games, but with Chris Stop's injury, we, we do decide, you know what, let's throw the 23 year old a contract, we could actually offer him a, a way lower one since he is injured right now so we just go ahead and we give him a contract extension right there and we pick up luke and by mute and yeah pretty much i did i did release west matthews and jj just because those guys would help us win and I, and I feel like even in real life uh if this was to happen to the knicks 
I think that they would just go ahead and say, hey, man, it, it's full-on tank mode. Now, now, obviously, we aren't like Mark Cuban. We aren't going to come out to, to the public and say that we are tanking, but we are actively tanking. Now, unfortunately, we have teams like the Orlando Magic who still find a way to, to lose to one player in Michael Porter Jr. I, I don't know how they are that bad. They have Trey Young and Aaron Gordon. They're such a better team, but... Porter is just dominating, so I am expecting him to win Rookie of the Year. He's already number one, and we actually do go ahead and simp through the trade deadline. And since we're here, why not hop into a game versus the Houston Rockets? Obviously, yeah, good. I was I was kind of scared. Now, Porter has been balling for us, and we are going to go ahead and jump into this game. Honestly, this gameplay is kind of pointless, but I just wanted to actually talk to, to you guys and... Yo, if you guys are enjoying this series, just just go ahead and like it up. Let me know uh, which moves we, we should actually be making because in the next episode, I will be probably going to the end of the season because, as I said, this season's over. No, like, we, we lost our best player. This season is most definitely over. So, yo, next episode, we're going to just go ahead and just be going to the end of this season. Porter is just being dominant. Um... Hopefully we can get him rookie of the year. If not, it's not really a big deal. I, I just think that he definitely deserves it. But of course, this class has Trey Young, who's been balling. DeAndre Aiden has, has been killing in this series. So we got to worry about all of those guys. But just let me know which moves we should be making, which players we should be targeting in the NBA draft, in free agency. Somebody that I'm actually thinking about in free agency is Julius Randle. I do know that he, he, he was a restricted free agent last year. This season, he should be unrestricted. And we obviously have cancer on that team option. So getting Julius Randle, he could be a great part of our young core. Obviously, Kristaps um, is a power forward as well, but Kristaps could slide down and, and play center. And then we have Julius Randle at power forward. We have Porter at small forward. Maybe we draft a shooting guard or Anthony Simmons and, and Frank hold down those, those guard spots. Any of those scenarios could happen. So let me know what you guys think that we should be doing during this offseason. The Rockets blow us out by 20 points. But Michael Porter Jr. did have 37, 9, and 4 assists on 50% shooting from the 3. That is ridiculous. Like, th this man has definitely shown us that he's going to be a force in this league. Another person that's been balling out is Ike, uh, the guy that we signed from, from UCLA. And while we're here, Porter is getting his number one jersey back. We, we did have to go ahead and change that. Number one, the same jersey number he wore in high school since Moutier is gone. We go ahead and we throw him that number now. As far as where our guy signed, J.J. Barrea signed with the Milwaukee Bucks. I definitely think that he could help them there. And Wes Matthews joined the Toronto Raptors. Both those moves are definitely realistic. But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode. The next one is going to be a lot longer and it's going to be live. So make sure you go ahead and like this video. Hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my second channel. Let's hit 3K subs this weekend. All right. Let's do it on that channel. I have 42,000, so yo, pull up and start showing all of that support. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, y'all. I'm living better than ever. I'm thinking like, how? Is it the money? Is it the cost? Is it the way?